Hey, welcome everyone to a review of the Sony WHCH520 headphones. Now, if you want to see the written version of this review, you can find a link to my website in the video description. So for the rest of this review, I'm going to reference them simply as a 520, just because it's an easier name. And I might make some references to the 510, the previous version. So the 510 is what I reviewed. Here we have the 520. We'll see where has Sony improved, if at all. So the first thing, of course, is the price. Here in Canada, it's priced at $99, and in the US, it's priced at a really low, cheap $59. Okay, so still on the subject of pricing, what I'm showing you now is my rough draft script, uh, because I did a bit of research, because I found that the pricing here in Canada doesn't really seem that fair. So you have $99 Canadian and $59 USD, which is not even close to being equal, even if you convert the currency. So what I mean by that is I looked at random pricings worldwide on the Sony website, so Sony Japan and a Sony UK, their pricing in their local currency is equivalent to the $59 USD. It's roughly the same, so pretty good there. Here in Canada, if you take our pricing in $99 Canadian, it equals 73 bucks USD. So significantly higher than what they have here. Same story in India. If you take their Indian rupees, convert it to uh, USD dollars, again, 73 bucks. It's way more expensive. Singapore has it absolutely brutal where they're paying $104 USD. Now, some might argue that in certain geographies, it's more difficult and more expensive to import goods, which I get in defense of Sony, but considering Canada is neighboring the US, a lot of electronics from other manufacturers, including other Sony products, they don't mark up the price this much higher just for whatever reason. They usually try to stick closer to a uh, local currency conversion. So it's unfortunate that Sony is purposely marking up the pricing in random geographies and other geographies like the UK are perfectly fine. So these are pure wireless headphones. They only support Bluetooth as a connected option and it uses Bluetooth 5.2 technology. So Sony advertises you can get about 33 feet of wireless range. In my testing, I was able to get close to 60 feet, almost double Sony's claim. And not only that, is that between the devices connected to and the headphones, there was about one wall in between before the signal started to cut out. Now the previous version 510 did not have multi-point connect. The 520 does. What that basically means, you can connect to two devices at the same time. So a great example is connecting to your desktop computer and your uh, cell phone. Uh, you can connect to both at the same time, but you can only listen to audio on one device at a time. However, if you're listening to audio or media on your computer, your cell phone rings, music will automatically pause and you can answer the call quickly using the headphones and you're good to go. However, out of the box, multipoint connect doesn't work. You have to connect it to the app on the smartphone and then turn it on from there. I'm not sure why that is, kind of strange, but just wanted to mention that, but I will be going over the app functions later on in this video. Now, when it comes to how many devices you can keep in memory, which basically means how many devices you can pair with the headphones before having to repair them and learn them all over again in the pairing mode, uh, in my testing, is able to give it four devices, but according to Sony documentation, you can get up to eight. Okay, so accessories. This shouldn't come as a shock, but there are no accessories except for the charging cable included in this. I mean, you weren't really expecting a hard traveler's case. I, I hope not at this cheap price tag, um, but that charging cable is measuring at about seven inches and it's a USB-A to USB-C cable. Unfortunately, uh, here in 2023, it should have been a pure USB-C to USB-C cable I'm not sure why Sony's still sticking with that old technology. Now, when it comes to the design, it's much cleaner and it looks better than the 510. Despite being about the same price tag, visually the 510 looked cheaper as well. The 520 looks more expensive than its actual worth. However, the 520 still retains a nice, clean, polished look. Now, here in Canada and US, it's available in three colors, black, white, and blue. Oddly enough, I found a random uh, Sony press release website for the 520 for the UK and there, I'm not sure if it's officially released or not, but they have it available also in a beige color. Now, when it comes to weight, they weigh a very light 147 grams, which feels great in the hand if you're carrying it around, around your neck, or even on your head. Um, but you know, despite the cheap price tag and the low weight, it's pretty sturdy um, given all those facts. It feels pretty strong, like I can bend it in weird shapes. I'm not really concerned if I were to drop it several times, the uh, plastic will crack feels pretty solid, but please do not drop them on purpose several times just to prove me wrong. There's no information if they're dust and water resistant, so my recommendation is to always just keep them uh, clean and not get them wet, otherwise you might risk damaging them uh, permanently. You might want to also keep that in mind for the ear cups so you don't get them torn or damaged because Sony does not sell official replacement units of the ear cushions, so uh, chances are if you get them damaged, you're out of luck, unless you're lucky enough that a third-party vendor sells them. 
Okay, so let's talk about comfort. Putting them on, after about half an hour, 45 minutes, my ears get warm, just slightly, not too much. Big improvement over the 510 though, nonetheless. I can still continuously wear them for about three hours straight and um, I still feel fine. They're not that uncomfortable unlike the 510 were. Again, it's just kind of weird that they do get warm. I think it has something to do with the flex of the headband. It's a little tight. It's tighter on the 510. They have improved it on the 520. I'm not sure why Sony keeps doing that. Um, but that's probably the culprit for why it gets a little bit warm. Now, when it comes to working out, they are a great companion for, you know, really just blasting music or listening to a podcast or whatever. Um, it's probably thanks to the slightly tight headband flex that I just mentioned. But whether you're doing cardio-based or weight training type of exercises, they don't really move at all. Um, so certainly a great option. This should be obvious, but I'll mention it anyway. These are on-the-ear headphones, so... Obviously, they're gonna make your ears sweat like crazy when you exercise, but just thought I'd mention that anyway. The ear cushions themselves are very soft and very nice against your ears. One more thing that's vastly improved over the 510 is that the interior headband actually has some soft cushioning. That's right, the 510, the previous version, had nothing. It was just pure plastic and it was not comfortable, especially for people that had little to no hair. Headband extensions is done in notches and it feels pretty sturdy. Um, the ear cups also have decent rotation as it can go up, down, forward, and back. Okay, so I have the extension of the headband in at the smallest level, and while resting them on my neck, you know, maybe you're traveling at an airport or a train station, you just wanna rest them, you know, looking left and right, they don't really rub against my chin that much, feels pretty comfortable, and looking down is even better because there's a decent gap here. Turning the ear cups up, not a problem, they don't really rub against my neck, feels pretty good, um, so overall, like, very comfortable to travel like this. And now switching over to controls. The left ear cup has nothing. All the controls are on the right ear cup at the back. The top button is for volume up and holding it goes to the next track. The bottom button is obviously for volume down and holding it goes to the previous track. The middle button has a bunch of functionality. It's the power on off button. Holding it will activate Bluetooth pairing mode. While music is playing, it'll play pause music. And regarding phone calls, it'll answer or hang up a call. Double pressing the power button quickly while it's connected to a smartphone, um, even if you're listening to music, will activate your smart assistant. So Siri for iPhone devices, and Google Assistant for Google devices, or Android rather. Um, in my testing, it works fairly well. I mean, nothing spectacular, but Google Assistant works okay as you expect. Okay, so it shouldn't be expected, but I'll mention it anyway, is that there's no passive pay pause. So basically what that means is, you know, you're listening to music, you have your headphones on, whatever. Um, when you take the headphones off, your music or video that you're watching would automatically pause. Putting them back on would automatically resume them. Just thought I'd mention it, but it shouldn't be surprising given the cheap price tag. Now switching over to Noise cancelling, there's no active noise cancelling. Again, this should be anticipated at this cheap price tag. But when it comes to just simply wearing them, because they are on the ear headphones, they will cover up your ear. Um, you know, so passive noise cancelling with just with the ear cushions, it's almost non-existent. You can hear almost everything around you. It's hard to explain, but if you're listening to music at say 50% volume, um, you will hear some of the surroundings, but again, it depends on how loud the people around you are. Like my kids are always screaming, crying, and fighting with each other, and then fighting with me when I try to break them up. Uh, then you can definitely hear them crying through the music, even at 50% volume. So it's hard to explain because it really depends on your circumstance. But again, at this cheap price tag, that shouldn't really be a bummer. When it comes to battery performance, Sony advertises a whopping 50 hours, which is great. That's pretty good. Um, except in my testing, after multiple battery drain tests, I was actually able to get better at 56 hours. So six hours average better than what Sony claims, which is great. Battery recharge time, again, it performed better than anticipated. Sony advertised it'll take three hours to fully charge. I was able to fully charge it in about two hours and 20 minutes. One thing to keep in mind is that you cannot use them while they are recharging. The charging port is located on the bottom right of the ear cup, just below the control buttons. And again, uh, when it comes to accessories, no charging adapter for, to connect directly to a power outlet as you're expected to charge it directly through a computer or using your own uh, power outlet adapter. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is a microphone sample test. Everything you're hearing right now is through the 520 headphones in a quiet environment. Then I'm gonna replicate a noisy environment and see if you can isolate a lot of the background noise. And then lastly, a wind test. Uh, one thing I wanna mention quickly is that the previous version, the 510 had side tone active on calls, every call pretty much. Uh, what that basically means is that the Audio from your voice will be projected into the headphones on purpose so you can hear if you're talking too loud or too quietly. 
which is really annoying for most people. Um, but the 520, it's just, there's no side tone. It doesn't exist at all. Even in the app, which I'll demonstrate very shortly, you can't even turn it on. So just something to uh, mention quickly. Okay, so everything you're hearing is through the camera microphone just to demonstrate how noisy it is in here. Um, now I'm switching over to the 520 microphone and you can take a listen for yourself if it isolates noise. In fact, I'm gonna stop talking uh, very shortly so you can kind of hear for yourself. Okay, and lastly is a wind test. I have the fan sitting about uh, four feet away from me. It's gonna let you hear for yourself if it's blocking a lot of the wind noise or not. Okay, so let's talk about audio quality. So, so far I mentioned that, you know, a lot of the shortcomings of the 510, Sony has fixed with the 520. Audio is no difference here. Um, they have improved audio drastically. So with a flat profile out of the box, in typical Sony fashion, bass is punched up a little bit higher. There's nothing that'll ruin your experience if you're not a bass enthusiast, but you will notice a slight punch there over the mids and highs. Um, of course, you can adjust everything in the equalizer in the app, which again, I'll cover shortly. Just wanted to mention that quickly. Um, mids sound fantastic. They're great. Highs sound pretty darn good, again, at this price point and flat profile. Now, when you adjust the equalizer, uh, adjusting the bass up higher can get surprisingly deep. It's not the best performance for bass enthusiasts, but again, price tag is a consideration, performs better than you thought. Uh, the only thing to notice is that when you increase the volume really high with bass accentuated high up, is that bass gets a little distorted. Although that's volume where it's kind of getting close to deafening, so there shouldn't be a problem. Vocals, when you increase them up, sound great, crystal clear. Um, let's basically summarize it this way, that lows and mids sound better than they should at this price tag. Okay, you're getting great bang for buck, uh, better value than uh, you're paying for, to be honest. Not, you know, putting highs to the side and saying it's bad, I'm not. It's just not as great as the way the lows and mids perform. Um, but the weird thing that I noticed is that for several songs I've tested is that when you increase the mids, you know, you're trying to focus on vocals. Bass still sounds okay. Highs kind of suffer a little bit. It's very bizarre. I've tried this in different apps with di different equalizers, even the Sony official equalizer, and it's always the same result. So nothing bad about highs, but it's something to keep in mind. And not surprisingly, it supports SBC and AAC, not AptX. Overall, the audio quality is way better than you expected at this price point. And now we're in the Sony Headphone Connect app. The 510 was not supporting this app. You couldn't use it, uh, but the 520 obviously works. And uh, the main screen is a status. You can control the media that's being played here if you want to. Here's where you have the equalizer. There are some preset settings that you can you know, play around with, but of course you do have the ability to customize and set your own profiles. If you were to go deeper into it, you can actually adjust the equalizers themselves. As you can see, I'm playing kind of flitting around, but clear bass is at the bottom in typical Sony fashion. Again, very uh, focused on the bass. This is where you can adjust the bass at the bottom and make it even higher if you want to. At the bottom, you can choose how you want to prioritize Bluetooth connectivity. I usually always prefer sound quality over a stable Bluetooth connection. And of course you have DSEE audio. Uh, you can turn this on and off. Turning this on made no difference. Um, I found that the audio sounded pretty much the same, but again, the performance is pretty good, so nothing to complain about. Switching over to system, this is where you have the ability to allow two devices to connect at the same time, which I highly recommend you turn on. It's very convenient. And just, you know, turning on or off uh, notification and voice guidance. So what do I got to say? Look, the 510, if you saw the review in my channel, it, despite a super cheap price tag, I was very disappointed by it. I didn't give it a great score. Um, nothing like it's horrible, but just it's not great either. The 520 has changed everything with Sony. I'm not sure if they got a brand new engineering team and product design team, but they kind of revamped everything. These are cheap headphones. They're not designed for traveling and noise cancellation. They're just for the everyday person who was on a low budget. And that's pretty much a wrap for this review. So if you found this video useful, be sure to check out my social links and website link in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help, subscribe, and thanks for watching.